When I first considered becoming a freelance data analyst, I had a million questions. How do I even start? What skills do I need? And how do I find clients? Today, I'm sharing all the answers I wish I had back then. And if you're starting to think about freelancing, this video will show you everything you need to know. We will talk about how to get started, even if you have no experience, the key skills you should learn, and where to find your first paying clients. You will also learn how much money you can realistically make and how to stand out to get more jobs. By the end, you will have a simple roadmap to start your freelance journey and make money using your skills. Okay, so what you see now on the screen is what I call the Data Freelancer Roadmap. And by the way, you can find this document in the video description, so make sure to check it out if you want to access it. Basically, it's a document that we will follow to make it very practical as a roadmap. There are only five steps, very practical steps, to get started as a data freelancer. So step number one is what I call developing a three-level service offering. This is mainly a brainstorming exercise to understand what you can offer as a freelancer. So the first level of this service offering is defining your core skill. Think about your main skill. This can be data analysis, machine learning, data engineering, or AI development. And so for example, if you're interested in data analytics, one key core skill could be analyzing business data to provide actionable insights. It's very generic, but it gives an idea of the core service that you can offer. And if you need help defining this core skill, consider a specific industry. Maybe you want to picture yourself as an expert in finance or marketing, still within the realm of data. Or you can even think about a specific tool. Maybe you want to present yourself as an expert in Python or SQL, focusing on everything related to SQL, for example, as your main service. Or it could be something like data visualization or process automation, basically one specific skill you are an expert in. And so this becomes your level one. Once this is defined, we move to level two, which means brainstorming all the deliverables you can provide based on your core skill. I put a lot of examples here, so you can think of building dashboards and reports using Power BI or Tableau, conducting exploratory data analysis, creating automated reporting workflows, or performing statistical analysis. And so to continue on our example, if our level one skill is analyzing business data to provide actionable insights, level two could be building dashboards and reports. Now for level three, we go even deeper. We break down our deliverables from level two into manageable components. And so once level two is defined, we can talk about level three, which involves splitting our deliverables into sub-services. And so using our example, if level two is building dashboards and reports, then level three could involve gathering business requirements, cleaning the data, transforming the data, defining the metrics and visualizing the metrics in a dashboard. So the idea is to break things down to really understand the sub-services that you can offer to potential client. And so once you've done this exercise, defining level one, two and three, you should have a clear idea of your core service. And so this exercise is more for your understanding, listing all the skills and services that you can offer to a potential client. When this internal exercise is done, it's time to do an external exercise, which is conducting market research. So now that we have a list of things that you can do, we need to answer the core question, which is, is that demand for the services that you have defined? We don't want to define our core service offering only to find out that there is no market demand. And so there is something that we can do now to finalize our service offering. And so here, go on the main freelancing websites and don't worry, I have a list of platforms that I will show you in just a second. Search for job posted by clients and cross check what you listed with what's available in the market. You might find that some services are requested by clients and can be added to your offering, while others might not be in demand and should be removed. And so once you cross check your brainstorming uh, with the actual market demand, you can finalize your core service offering. And because I have an action item for each of the step of the roadmap, here the action item is to write down your core skills and services, follow the levels one to three exercise and conduct market research to create your freelancing blueprint. Now, step two focuses on the idea of becoming a freelancer. Many people picture freelancing as a dream lifestyle, working by the beach, having all the freedom they want. But from experience, I can tell you that this might not be the case. Freelancing means dealing with uncertainty, especially regarding income. There may be months with multiple projects and months with none. And so, for example, building an emergency fund for safety is pretty crucial. If you are just starting out, consider freelancing only when you have a stable source of income. You can take on projects in the evenings or weekends. And this was actually my approach because I'm a very risk adverse person and this actually worked out very well for me. Being a freelancer also means becoming a business owner. So you must embrace that mindset, uh, constantly upskilling on different tools, uh, do market research and be uh, self-driven. 
So you won't have someone giving you tasks. You must be very disciplined and set goals. You can schedule weekly goals, keep yourself motivated and define key metrics to drive your business forward. And so again, because I want to be as practical as possible, examples of weekly goals could be contacting potential clients, creating LinkedIn posts or achieving other milestones. Now that we cover step one and two, Step three is all about building your personal brand. Your personal brand is pretty much everything. And so to do that, we first of all need to work on a portfolio, which is a document or website that is uh, showcasing your skills and making you stand out. It's a crucial item to have before reaching out to potential clients. There are many examples of great portfolios online and I have a video actually that explains how to build a portfolio from scratch and for free and I will link it here. If you want inspiration, look at this portfolio. This guy is a freelancer, senior software engineer specializing in data visualization, and his website is impressive, showcasing uh, his experience and attention to details. You can sense his expertise right away. Even if you don't have years of experience, you can create a portfolio with projects that you've done on the side or, uh, for example, in a course. And again, if you need help here, my Data Analytics Master course helps you build hands-on projects that uh, can go in your portfolio. And we actually create your own portfolio with four advanced projects. So in case you're interested, make sure to check it out in the video description. Then the other item in this uh, step is your LinkedIn profile, which is super important. You have to optimize it and start posting regularly. I know that this sounds cliche, but posting three or four times a week will increase your visibility. Share projects, data tips, or personal career experiences. For example, post an analysis you did on a public data set or share visualizations that solve business problems. And when you took care of your portfolio and your LinkedIn, now is the time to create a profile on the main freelancing platforms. There are plenty of freelancing platforms and I have a list in the roadmap that is specifically focused on uh, tech and data roles. And the main point for me here is that I know it's a time consuming exercise, but the more profiles you create in these popular websites and the higher is the chance to uh, get more clients because you will never know if if your first client is actually in Upwork or will be in Fiverr. And so my approach here is to try to keep as many doors open to increase your chance to success. And if I want to give you an action item for this step, would be probably to update your LinkedIn and prepare the first post where you describe your services. And so we covered step one, which is defining your services. Uh, step two, that is training your mindset as a freelancer and step three, which is building your personal brand. Now, step four is uh, what I call mastering the art of selling. We have to sell our services and find clients. A practical way to approach this step is to go on Upwork, which is one of the most popular freelancing platforms. I searched for uh, data analyst jobs and I found a market research analyst job. The job post says that they're looking for someone in the UK for top line uh, market analysis, competitor benchmarking and revenue potential assessments. There is a hourly rate ranges from $9 to $50 and it's a remote one-time project for someone with intermediate experience. This example shows why mastering the art of selling is super important because the job description are often very vague so uh, you have to prepare for an introductory call. And in this call, you will probably ask questions to understand the client's needs better. And you have to remember that selling isn't about showcasing your skills, but about positioning your service as a solution to problems. And so instead of saying, I know Python, you can say something like, I can automate your reporting using Python. And this approach is what you should practice. Pricing is another important aspect. There are two main uh, pricing models. One that is uh, per hour or per project. And so when you're on a call with a client, it's essential to negotiate and even upsell additional services if possible. And so an action item for you is to draft a sample proposal and think about how you would position your services to solve a client's problem. And you could use the job posting that we just seen as a practical example as well. And finally, step five is delivering exceptional services. I got this insight from Statista, which shows that in the US, the main source of clients for tech freelancers is uh, previous clients and also friends and family. And so focusing on client experience is super key. Be professional, communicate well, meet deadlines and provide clear documentation. If you deliver exceptional service, your client is likely to hire you again or refer you to others. An example in data analytics could be delivering a dashboard and providing a brief guide on how to use it or offering a follow-up session for questions. It's really about going the extra mile. And so an action for you would be, for example, to learn project management and consider reading a book that I really like, which is called How to Win Friends and Influence People. 
to improve your clients' interactions. And our roadmap has also a bonus point, which is to join supportive communities because freelancing can be very lonely without an office environment. And so joining a community can help you get feedback and also connect with peers. If you get stuck, you can get help from people who understand your work. And here, an action item for you will be to join my Data Lab free community. I opened it a few weeks ago and we already have more than 300 members. Uh, we have weekly calls and a supportive environment for data professionals. It's completely free to join and I will include a link in the video description. And there you have it, a simple step-by-step -step guide to get started as a freelance data professional. If you found at least one useful information in this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel so that I can help you even further in the next one. And in case you want to learn more about data analytics, I put together a video where I teach pretty much all I learned in my six years of experience as a data analytics lead. There is a huge amount of value compressed in one video only, so make sure to check it out at the link that you see here in the screen. And well, enjoy the rest of your day. Ciao for now and see you in the next one.